Okay, so welcome to the uh, practical part of the tutorial. So here in the first part, we will go through the uh, basic uh, system setup with only quantum mechanics using a newly developed uh, interface between Gromax and CP2K. So basically the idea of the interface is that uh, most of the people uh, know how to use Gromax. Yeah, most of you probably know how to use Gromax, but there is a very limited number of people who can actually uh, uh, who can perform simulations also using CP2K. So our idea of the following, uh, developing the following interface is to provide the, uh, provide the people with uh, knowledge of Gromax to also be able to use uh, quantum mechanics, especially in periodic systems. So uh, yeah, let's start the practical part. So first I will do a quick lecture recap. Uh, just to, to for most important parts from it. Then uh, I will uh, ex describe how the Chromax CP2K interface works. So then we will do a setup, then we'll do exercise on setting up this pure, for now, pure QM calculation using that interface. And I will explain what in CP2K input is uh, uh, kind of important to know. And uh, yeah. Next, you can do exercises again. So uh, yeah, and we finish with uh, some more advanced uh, usage, how to use a Gromax, uh, for example, pooling uh, code to generate them um, to do umbrella sampling for QM system. OK, so let's start with the lecture recap. It's really short, it will be really short. So as might you know that uh, Gromax is molecular mechanics program. So it uses a classical so-called molecular force field. Uh, to perform simulation uh, of the system. What means that my, uh, force field, uh, classical force field, is that your uh, total energy of your system and that the gradient, that the uh, movement of system is described by a number of quasi-classical parameters. Uh, so they are split usually into bonded and non-bonded. So bonded uh, parameter, uh, interactions or parameters is represented by bonds, angles, torsions, and several actually kind of torsions in reality. Uh, yeah, which have a form of usually harmonic oscillator function. And non-bonded parameters are usually uh, two types of them. So first of all, it's Leonard Jones or Van der Waals parameters or repulsion between atoms. And uh, the second one is columbic interaction uh, between your atoms, which are, also have a partial charge, so-called. And this is how you do it in Gromax. So the difference with uh, CP2K now is that uh, instead of uh, a number of these parameters, instead of large number of parameters, you now describe your system on a fully quantum level. So starting from the ab initio, from, 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 from the wave function, basically. And what you do here uh, is that you first uh, have some quantum system. So for each atom in that quantum system, you provide the uh, basis set and you also choose a method, for example, PFT. Yeah? Uh, and then you uh, calculate the forces and energies on the basis of just to, uh, that, fact, uh, to that parameters. So how in CP2K it's working, it's working quite differently from normal QM software like Gaussian, for example. So uh, the CP2K uses quick step algorithm, uh, which is uh, which is kind of extension of the, which kind of not extension, it is, it uses the, uh, uh, the, uh, so-called mixed Gaussian play wave basis set. Uh, what, uh, what it is, so it was explained in the lecture, but in, in, in short, so you assign to each atom like a normal Gaussian-like simulation uh, basis set, Gaussian basis set, but you also at the same time uh, have a plane wave basis set. So you have plane waves in the box, yeah, like normal box, uh, particle in the box uh, wave function like uh, as a basis. And what you want to do, so you basically construct your uh, initial uh, dens density matrix for the DFT uh, using Gaussian basis set, and then you map that uh, basis onto the real space uh, multigrid. So grids and plane waves are basically uh, the same uh, determination, uh, the same definition, have the same definition. Usually grids is a real space grids, and uh, for the reciprocal space, yeah, you can use uh, plane waves. So Basically, it's the same. Uh, it's the same. Uh, it's the same. 
the same thing. You map basically that on the grid in the real space. Then you do this, you, you pass this into the reciprocal space, you do fast Fourier transform. And then you minimize uh, energy, uh, why you need to do it in the reciprocal space, because then you have the periodicity. And then you have, uh, then you can uh, obtain a real density matrix in the reciprocal space. Then you can uh, solve a function equation in the reciprocal space, obtain new density matrix, check if you converge or not in a density. So if your density change with respect to the previous iteration is small enough, then you say, okay, I'm converged. And then from that converged density, you calculate energy forces, any other properties you want. If not, then you go on to the second cycle. You again expand uh, your density in Gaussian basis set. You construct again function matrix, map it back to the real space, and so on. And the cycle continues. So uh, this was a short uh, recap of the what you should pick up from the first lecture. And now let's move to the uh, how it actually works when you go to the so our newly developed uh, Gromov cp interface. So what uh, Gromox CP2K is essentially is doing, it uses a machinery of Gromox uh, for classical MD and methods from Gromox on classical MD uh, to perform uh, also simulation uh, with quantum forces, which can be derived from the CP2K. So uh, here it's more general slide. So here you have all three terms. So you have a part from the molecular mechanics, part from the QM, uh, quantum mechanics, and coupling parameters. It will be covered in the next lecture, so for now just forget about this. But uh, what is important here is that uh, the interface could provide you a full QMMM description of the region normally as you do, uh, but using the same uh, topologies, force fields, parameters, methods, which you can normally use in Gromax. Uh, so these are some features which interface provides you in general. So it uh, takes uh, a normal Gromox topology. It automatically converts it uh, to from classical MD to QMMM. Uh, so it uh, makes some modifications to charges, bonds. Uh, it automatically set up link atoms. Uh, it will be covered in the next lecture also. So it also provides uh, some set of validated uh, parameters, QM parameters. Uh, for starting your simulation. It's not 100% uh, correct for all cases, so you need to sometimes to check your cells. But in most cases, it will be more or less suitable for uh, biological systems. Uh, so uh, it's also compatible with most of the simulations available in Gromax, maybe for now with except of the free energy uh, perturbation. Uh, yes. Um, and uh, also it fully compatible with any Gromax tools, uh, which is in Gromax, and it uh, supports also the, it can be highly parallelizable in some terms, like if you're using ensemble methods. Okay, so how you should set up your QMM question in general? Yeah, so first you need to make your system like you normally do it in Gromax. So you just do a normal classical MM, MD, system for MD simulation. Uh, so you can equilibrate it, you can maybe with classical MD, yeah, you can do whatever you want. And then you just switch uh, several parameters in the MDP file. And the system will automatically go into the QMMM, Q, QMMM mode. Uh, and then you can uh, do this uh, QMMM calculations or pure QM calculations in the, in the Gromax. There's some examples of what you can do now. Okay. So let's start with our practical. So please open uh, the uh, QMMM uh, tutorial uh, page uh, and open uh, the, from the episodes, choose the uh, practical Gromox CP2K part one. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, I guess I chose it. So, and please do the, uh, following thing. So uh, please uh, do the uh, setting up tutorial environment part. And uh, uh, yeah, and that's all for now. Yes. Uh, I think we will continue in five minutes. By the way, if someone is interested, you can just copy paste uh, some comments into directly from the site uh, from the episode into the terminal window 
Yes. It also may be much faster than printing it each time with your hands. Okay, I see that most of the people managed to do so. So let's continue. Uh, so the first uh, the first exercise would be uh, setting up a very simple uh, QM system in a very small box, like shown on the right, si uh, right uh, left, uh, left side of the slide. Uh, so it is a very small molecule called n methylacetamide with only 12 atoms. There will be no MM system for now in this practical. So it have a charge zero of that part and multiplicity is one of other fundamental properties, spin multiplicity, it will be one. We will use a DFT with PV functional for that, uh, for that uh, exercise. So the box is really small. It's only one uh, molecule. In reality, it's, it's periodic box. So you have uh, images of the molecule here and there. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, let's do the starting with the first exercise. Do the steps one to five. And once you have done also raise your hand. Good. Uh, if you have any problems with, with uh, setting up the simulation, especially doing this uh, GMX PDB to GMX, but I, I suppose most of you are already familiar with Chrome Excel. There shouldn't be any problems. Yes. Do you want to say anything about the, uh, those, so these parameters in the MDP file? The uh, yes, I will. Yes, yes, yes. It will whether, if, you, if you don't specify them, their yeah. defaults and things like that. Yes, so the idea is that, uh, uh, yes, on the next slide, I will show. Uh, multiplicity, yeah, what, what does QM multiplicity one mean? So basically your QM system have another fundamental property, which is called uh, spin, yeah, uh, which is not the case in classical system, but in quantum mechanical system, you have that property as a spin. And when it comes to the quantum mechanics, you always need to specify spin state of your system. One means a singlet state. Yeah, basically you as you are informing that uh, you, you want to calculate your system in a singlet state. Uh, singlet state means that all electrons is paired up, basically. Uh, yes, uh, there is another states like triplet, for example, states uh, mostly. Okay, so now we probably can go through the Okay, let's wait another minute. <laughs> now, uh, for the basic set for now, you don't need to specify anything. Uh, functional PB, so PB is one of the DFT functionals, which is kind of uh, standard for the, uh, one of the standard DFT functionals, which is used a lot in the computations. Usually it can be different, for example, some of you probably know uh, about the bit relief functional. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, tomorrow I think uh, Holly will also show you how you can use that in the B2K, whereas it is a bit sm much slower than the PB function uh, computational mean. But yeah, this is basically the method how you uh, calculate your system, uh, how, it, how it to 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 explain it more simply. It's just a method. <laughs> just a Parameterized method to use. Okay, uh, spin restricted or unrestricted. So uh, yes, uh, for now the uh, uh, interface automatically set up if it's restricted or unrestricted. So on the basis of the multiplicity you put it in, uh, you put in, uh, and uh, if it's multiplicity one, it will be restricted. If it's more than one, it will be unrestricted. But I mean, tomorrow uh, I will show you uh, how to use non-standard parameters. For example, you can use uh, unrestricted, if you use, want to use unrestricted calculations with spin multiplicity one. So with single state, it's also possible, but I will show you uh, tomorrow how you can do that in the interface. Okay, uh, let's continue. So uh, please uh, see the uh, MDP parameters. Uh, please open the uh, em.mdp file and you will see the following picture. So uh, this is a very simple uh, setup, uh, which we use just to minimize the energy. So we use a steepest descent optimization algorithm here. Uh, 
Uh, this is some tolerance parameters, 100 maximum steps. So there is output frequency normal uh, parameters for Grobox. Yeah, like we want to output coordinates each one step, we want to output into log file each step, we want to calculate energy each step, and we want to output energy each step. Uh, there is cutoffs, they are set up to very small value because we have a very small box and we don't have any uh, micro mechanical parts, so they are really not so important, uh, these parameters. And what is important is that part of the parameters. This is how you activate the QMMM calculation in CP2K or in Gromos to use CP2K interface. Uh, so, uh, yes, you can also use another integrators like CG. Yes, right, correct. But yeah, steep is just. Uh, yeah, there is a specific reason of putting parameters to 0 0.2 because. Uh, I mean, for, QM, for pure QM calculation, that cutoffs is not needed. It's needed for MM calculation, which is not the case here. If you put uh, standard cutoffs, what will happen? The Gromax will complain that it cannot, uh, that the system is too small. So it cannot use uh, the number of processors you want to ask him. It cannot just decompose the system. So I've just put a very little small parameters because it's a very small system. It's like a box of one nanometer by one nanometer by one nanometer and it is too small for the standard parameters. So I just reduce them, but they are not important because it's uh, MM parameters, but there is no MM system. Okay, As, uh, if you do a standard parameters, you then need to adjust the number of API ranks of open MP threads and so on, which is just a pain, a bit painful. Uh, okay, uh, so, uh, what is uh, so? How you activate the QMM parameters? You just put QMM active to true. By default, it, it is false. Uh, so it activates a module. And then you need to specify which group of atoms will be uh, your QM system. So in that case, whole system is QM. So we just use here system, yes, under group in Gromax. Then there is uh, three parameters de defining which method we want to use. So here we use the QMM method PB. It just means that uh, Gromax will automatically set up the CP2K parameters for the PBE function uh, with a double Z basis set. And also you need to put charge and multiplicity of your system, as I said before. It's a pure uh, quantum related parameter, so you need to know beforehand what is them. Uh, so next, uh, I will show if you open your uh, CP2K input file, if you do a plus nma.in, then uh, what will what you see, it will be uh, CP2K parameters, which have been automatically generated by the uh, Gromax. Uh, so the first global section, of course, it's just a standard head heading parameters. Uh, we want to calculate energy and force because we integrate that in the Gromax. Uh, the sex section is the most important for several evil section. So here is the several subsections. Uh, for that, we use a uh, method QMMM called. So it means that it's quick step with some external charges if they are present. Uh, so next section is DFT section, which contains uh, the parameters of your DFT. Then QMMM section contains parameters for your QMMM setup. A map section which defines your point charges and so on if they are present, and subsystem it is coordinates uh, basis sets and so on. Okay, I will shortly go through that uh, sections. What you see. Uh, so method we using QMM. Here is a charge and multiplicity. They are passed just directly to CP2K. Uh, this is basis set uh, file name and potential file name. This is just a Mm, basis set uh, database of CP2K. Usually they are provided with CP2K installation, that kind of files. But you also can use your own if you want. Uh, there is a setup of the multigrids, which uh, Emiliana talked about in the in the his lecture. So basically the CP2K is multigrid approach. So you not use one grid, but use several grids with the different cutoffs. So the largest one here, for example, we're using five grids. Uh, with uh, largest grid cutoff 450 Rydbergs. And relative cutoff is uh, 
for now it's not used, but it will be used uh, for defining the projection of the your Gaussian basis functions onto the grid. So it, it basically decides on which grid uh, your Gaussian will be projected. Uh, yeah, and this aligns the grids. So uh, SCF gets restarted means that CP2K first will try to search any wave function file existing in your directory for restart. Or if it's not present, it will use just a standard atomic guess. And this is a accuracy of his convergence and density matrix space. Okay, so next section is a uh, setup of actual potential, or oh, oh, potential of uh, DFT functional. So uh, first parameter uh, is XC, it's actually exchange correlation called, yeah, so it's a DFT setup. So here we use the PB functional with a cutoff. It's precision parameters which automatically set up by the interface. In most cases, they are, will be okay. Uh, it's quite high, actually. Even. Uh, so the method is GPV for quick steps. There is quick step parameters. We use the method GPV, which Emiliano talked about. Again, accuracy parameter. Extrapolation method, it means how your uh, wave function will be reused from previous step. So for example, if you calculate step by step, yeah. So what CP2K will do, it will use a previous, previously converged to a function for the previous step into the, onto the next step to accelerate convergence, I can say, uh, of the new, uh, of the, at the new step. And what is also uh, in the next section is subsystem section. Uh, so what you need to look at. So this uh, subsection specifies a system which we're using. So here it's a full system cell. Uh, full system cell in that case is one by one by one nanometer because I in angstrom, so it's 10 by 10 by 10 angstroms. And you have a fully periodic cell, like usually in Gromax. This, yeah, actually this cell should be the same as in Gromax, a Gromax cell. It's automatically generated like, generate like that. And next, go in the basis set setup for each uh, atom kind in your system. So, uh, uh, for example, here it's kind hydrogen, yeah. So it's element hydrogen, and we have a basis set for that, and we have a, we set up a pseudo potential, which we also, at the later stage, uh, will be explained what it is. Uh, so there is kind of carbon. There should be kind of uh, nitrogen and for oxygen which are set it up in the same way. And uh, now you can do the, uh, oops, sorry. If you do the, uh, 0.7, part seven, step seven of this uh, exercise, you will find something like that. So this is what the result of your energy minimization. It's basically potential energy with respect to the step, optimization step. You see that uh, it converges as uh, quite fast. Actually, in 20 steps, it's already almost at the minimum, and then it almost have no change. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of the result of the your energy minimization. So next, what we will do, uh, instead of energy minimization, we will do uh, uh, molecular dynamics with NVT ensemble. So please do the uh, remaining steps of exercise one. So for the for the sake of the recording, I'll just read out the question and the answer. <laughs> so we have mm -hmm. that. So the question was Matthew asked for the interface: Is it required that Gromax is compiled with double precision? Uh, and Dimitri, you said no. It could also be single precision. But in general, for QMM, you want to have full double precision in the coordinates. Yeah. So. I, I, I can explain briefly what I meant. So uh, precision is not does not matter for Gromax. You can be both single and double precision. Uh, CP2K will anyway work in double precision as most of the quantum codes, if not all of them. Uh, so yes, uh, single precision generate less uh, trajectories. Trajectories will be smaller, for example, but in QMMM, it is not the limiting step. I mean, usually your trajectories will be not so big as in, in classical MD because you cannot have so many steps usually. And thus, yeah, 
both will work, but uh, double precision coordinates will be better, in my opinion. Uh, can anyone share uh, the links pertaining to the integrated Gromos P2K code so we can install our local clusters? Uh, Arma, did you get the link into the uh, uh, into the document, I guess, somewhere or on the site? It was on the registration page, but I did not put it with the course materials. I can put it into the chat. Yes, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess into the chat or on the course uh, page later we will put it. Uh, yeah, I, because I remember that Tarna put it at some point, which I don't remember where. Yes, it is available. Uh, it's available in two versions, with plumped and without also plumped, if you want to use plumped. Uh, yeah, but it is available. But I, I warned you that it is just, I can say, alpha version. <laughs> so it is not include any support from the Gromax directly uh, for now. Once it will be integrated into the Gromax, it will go into beta, beta version, probably. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, before the July it could happen. Uh, and then it will be, yes. Yeah, this version which I use in Archer is also includes plumb support. But in general, it is 2021.1 20, uh, Gromax uh, with QMMM. Also, I think this week or next week will be Chromax 2021.2 release, and I will also provide that version. Okay, uh, so if someone finished with uh, steps 8 to 11, please uh, raise your hand so we can continue. Yes. Uh, we will continue in, anyway in four minutes. So. Okay, so anyway, I will continue in a moment. You will always have a time to finish your exercise if you want. Uh, as I already said, it will be Archer accounts will be active. So if you want, you can go and also the web page will be online. So you can go through the tutorial once again, if something is not clear. Uh, probably I will continue because most of the people I see manage to do this. So. Uh, results of this will be like that. So basically, we are trying to use NVT Ensemble, but and here, like your dynamics will look like if you download uh, trajectory and, for example, render it in PyMol or VMD or whatever program you're using. Uh, and uh, the temperature plot will look like that. So there is a really high uh, oscillations. It oscillates again around 300 Kelvin, but it's really high oscillations. Why it is so? Because, of course, uh, the system is too small. You don't have much uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, I will later we will see an example that in a bigger system, in the full QMMM system, uh, it will be much smaller oscillations. But yeah, basically the, the dynamic still works. Uh, okay, so I think this is the end of the exercise one. So this is how you set up. So easy, really small uh, QM, pure QM system uh, with the interface. Uh, and uh, I think uh, if someone is already done, uh, let's move to the exercise two. Uh, exercise two will be a bit more involving and I really want you to uh, kind of make attention, pay attention to what you're doing. Because here we want to use a collective, your collective uh, kind of force uh, to do something meaningful. <laughs> uh, uh, and what we will do here, we will again use a quantum, purely quantum system without a MEM subsystem. But what we want to, our objective will be to make a free energy profile of the steel beam isomerization reaction uh, using the QM. Uh, using the same uh, functional PV. So it's already a bigger system, as you see. Uh, and what is important that uh, it could isomerize around this double bond here to from trans to cis configuration. Uh, and we want to produce free energy profile. How we will do this, it will be umbrella sampling. Uh, I will explain later what we will do or how it works 
uh, what will be the result. But for now, I want you to start exercise two and do the steps one to seven. Uh, yes, for the uh, step two, uh, you need uh, 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 to do your uh, grow file, which you need to pick up. It can be picked up either in the document, which are not linked, or I can share a bit in the video here for a moment. Arna, you can cut up. So here is your username on the Archer, and here is a structure you need to pick up uh, on the step two. And here is the hydral angle, which you need to pick up. Ah, I'm just trying to explain it. So basically, uh, asset. So first you need to do to type zero, then type enter, and then the uh, option seven will also appear. You need to copy basically the zero uh, group uh, into seven. So it, it just everything which is typed, you just need to type literally as it <laughs> as it is. So if there is zero, enter, then name seven qm atoms enter then q enter <laughs> yes in reality there is no need but yeah just <laughs> uh, yeah it just to show how you need to specify the qm atoms how you can specify the qm atoms using the gmx making index make index option because of course for bigger system like proteins you want to just pick up uh, not the whole system, but several atoms. And this is how you should do that. Okay, let's continue. Uh, I, 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 let's continue this. You will have a time to finish your uh, tutorial later. I mean, the whole week will be yours. Uh, that steps. So what we're going to do uh, and what is now simulating uh, is uh, so-called umbrella sampling. So what is umbrella sampling? Uh, it's a short introduction. So basically, if your system has some reactivity, so you want to study the reaction, and you have two states, a state A and state B, and there is some barrier between them, and you want to know uh, the energy profile, free energy profile in reality, uh, of that system, uh, what you're going to do, you're going to just, uh, yeah, you, you, you need some method to do that, and umbrella sampling is one of that methods. So basically how it works, uh, you simulate your system uh, in the number of points along the pathway. So you should know your reaction coordinate beforehand, but it's in most cases it is like that. And you simulate your system uh, in a number of states. Uh, wait. So in how you do that, you basically uh, put a harmonic potential in each of that points, which are here indicated by arrows, you put a, a harmonic potential which will attract your system or your reaction coordinate towards that point. You basically pull it into that point and you simulate it with that umbrella, oh, umbrella with that harmonic potential for, uh, uh, for some time. And then uh, you take a distribution in each of that individual frames, a distribution of your coordinate, reaction coordinate each of frames. And from that and from knowing the uh, force constant of your uh, of your harmonic potential and distribution, you can convolve your free energy profile. So for that, for example, the, here is the distribution of each frame. Yeah, it should look in reality in in, in the best case it should look like Gaussian. Uh, but the most important thing is they need to overlap. So you should see the overlap between the individual frames. That's what we need to check. Uh, it needs to be sufficient, sufficient. Yeah, how sufficient it is very arbitrary thing. <laughs> In reality, I will show you later why. Uh, and uh, the energy profile, uh, you can integrate from the coordinate uh, using the GMX HAM tool. So you just basically need gather uh, all pool x.xvg files and TPR files for each simulation in one directory. And then with the GMX HAM tool, you can integrate the whole profile. And that's what we're going to do now. But uh, for further information, if you're interested in how to use umbrella sampling in Gromax, there is a tutorial on that here. So yeah, probably it's the best way for now how you can uh, do the uh, reaction, uh, how you can study reactions in the Gromax. Uh, yeah, so it was worth to try and worth to learn how to use it. Uh, 
let's move to the next slide. Yes. So how it's looking in the MDP parameters? You can open that less uh, with less this MDP file and go to the section called pool. Uh, and uh, in pool, uh, in pooling code, it's basically pooling code. It's basically the molecular dynamics with applied additional force. And in pooling code, you just say set up that you want to pool. We want to pull here one coordinate, dihedral angle, that. Uh, dihedral angle in Romax, it consists of the four uh, group uh, of four coordinates. It's defined by four uh, coordinates. So here we define uh, four groups with the coordinates. So first and fourth group is the center of masses of that ring coordinate. And two and three, it's position of these two atoms. Uh, then we want to pull uh, using umbrella. So it's basically harmonic potential and pull geometry is the hydro and pull dimensions is uh, all dimensions. It's what, yes, yes, yes. So we pull in all dimensions. And this is how you define your uh, the hydro angle. So it basically uh, the hydro angle will be spanned uh, between uh, the uh, two planes defined by pairs of vectors. So basically between pairs between vector one to two and two to three, it's one plane. And the second plane is two to three and three to four vectors spanned on that vectors. So basically this is your dihedral angle between these two kind of planes defined by these vectors. Uh, so here it's, it's some initial value, but in reality you need to set up your own here. And you need to scan over that uh, coordinate. In reality, you need to launch like many simulations uh, starting with a different pooling coordinates. So the, the pooling rate is zero because we just want to restrain it in place. Uh, this is K value, which also needs to convolve the profile in kilojoules per mole per square nanometer. And uh, I think it's not nanometer here, it's radian. Ah, no. Yeah, it's nanometer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, you inform Gromach that you want output force and coordinates of that pooling, of that reaction coordinate each step. Okay. So this, here is your QMM parameters. So it's basically the same as it was in previous case, but here you set it up your QM atoms group first time. And uh, this will be important uh, in the further simulations with real QMM systems. Uh, so be careful usually with that because with that group, with that kind of groups, you can set up uh, your QM system, especially in the bigger protein systems. And again, we have used the same PB functional, zero charge and singlet spin state. Uh, yes, so uh, beforehand I've done, so this is how your coordinate looks like in dynamics. Uh, and uh, beforehand I've done this uh, simulation with uh, just normal MD, uh, classical MD setup using number 14 force field. And I've simulated for one and a second for each frame. It's very important in my opinion. Uh, and you will get the following canvas profile. So basically, this is your trans structure, this is your cis structure, uh, it's the hydral angle value, and this free energy. And you see that it is really high barrier. Yeah, it's 160 kilojoules per mole isomerization barrier. Uh, yeah, that, let's see how it will change if we, instead of MM force field, we'll use QM system. So please do the part nine, uh, copy your output result. You can finish the exercise two, uh, part nine. And after the lunch, I will uh, convolve the profile and show you the result. So just do up to the part nine and then go for the for lunch. Yeah, that's the idea. Please do not forget to copy also pool x.xg files because I see that uh, some people forgetting to do so because there is 10 uh, TPR files and only eight XCG files. We need both of them. Uh, so what is uh, X axis and Y axis? Yeah, so X axis is a uh, uh, time step 
and the y-axis is a uh, coordinate. Uh, if you use pool x, it will be coordinate. If you if you look into the pool f.xcg file, it will be a force. That's why it's in kilojoules per mole. It will be per mole per nanometer, I guess. But I am now looking at the uh, pool x files, and they are all uh, time with respect to the position. So we are probably uh, we are looking into the wrong file. Yes, I, I suppose it's about this slide and about this group one, group two, group three, group four. How they defined? They defined in the index file uh, as always in Gromax. Uh, so if you go to the, uh, I, I will show you now. Uh, if you go to your directory with uh, uh, still been marked in directory, there is index.ndx file. And uh, in that file, I will open it. Yes. So uh, that file will look like that. So, um, oops. Oops, sorry. Yes. Okay. So this is a file index. So, and here is a group defined. So here they are. I have just provided them beforehand. Uh, yeah, in reality, the group one, as you see, is the many of atoms, it's just ring one. Uh, the group four is the second ring, a center of masses of these rings, of course, defines. And and these two is just basically of one atom, of one carbon atom here. So they're defined in that file. Where you, you also need to define, for example, QM atoms. Uh, yeah. But this is a general uh, Gromax uh, thing. Uh, always when you see that kind of stuff, you usually need to look up the look them up in the index file. And uh, another question is, what is the pooling dimension means? I guess uh, so that pool uh, 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 yes. Uh, second question, yeah. Uh, Ah, what what has to be considered to set the force constant and pull rate in this case? So the force constant uh, should be pretty arbitrary thing. The only uh, thing should be that your force constant should be strong enough that you can overcome the barrier. Uh, it's need to be uh, uh, to be guessed by you. So it's up to you. Uh, if you see that your system cannot cross the barrier uh, near the barrier, so you use, you always stick to the sides then you need to increase your force constant. Pulling rate zero is that because you don't want uh, to really pull the system. So what, what pulling rate will does, it will basically each picosecond will uh, decrease this, decrease or increase this value depending on the rate uh, by some number. And so it means that your system will start pulling. There is another option how you can do the free energy barrier using, for example, Yerzinski inequality. And for that, you will need the uh, uh, the pulling rate, but for umbrella sampling, pulling rate should be zero. So this is defined by the umbrella sampling. Uh, that's, I guess, the second question. The third question, in the MDP file, uh, dimension YYY corresponds to the group connections for the, the hero. No, YYY here means that you are not restricting pulling in any Cartesian dimensions. So for example, you can pull uh, in Gromox, you can pull uh, atom only in X dimension. Yeah, not in Y and Z. And you mean that your fully, if your pulling force will be uh, in Cartesian space, not uh, in, in X direction, it will just uh, project out the components in Y and Z and only pull in X direction. Uh, and here we want, of course, to pull in all three dimensions. So your forces will be not restricted to one dimension. Forces which you apply to pull will be not restricted to one dimension. They will be pulled in all three dimensions uh, fully freely. Uh, yeah, it's all usually it's the case what you need to use in number of sampling. Yeah, if you just don't want to pull in one dimension <laughs> in Cartesian space. Uh, for example, in membrane systems, you usually want to pull along the Z direction, then you set only Z direction. Yeah. But to Y, to yes. Yes. So about the results of the first part. Uh, now you can go to the uh, directory. Uh, where you copied your uh, pullix and uh, uh, TPR files. It is uh, uh, tutorial shared, shared tutorial umbrella. And I've generated for you this, uh, the following command. 
the so I just pull here is a comment which you can do. So it's basically doing harm. So this is that file which contains uh, names of all TPR files. This is that file which contains names of all uh, Pulix files. And here is some options. So you want to also build histogram. I will show you later why. Units kilojoules per mole, uh, minimum minus 180, maximum 20. Uh, beans, it's uh, ham beans, it's how it samples and starting from zero time. Uh, okay, and there is a two files now. One is a uh, uh, profile.xvg file. The second is a uh, histo.xvg file. Uh, so the profile xvg file looks like that. I can show you. Uh, so this is your profile. So something happened apparently on the middle, <laughs> but I will show you what happened uh, later. So. Uh, you can do it yourself. So this is what, what it looks like. And uh, yeah, in reality, what's happened here? And that's why you always need to be careful when you're doing any simulations and uh, check always do a signing sign check of your simulations. So of course, you know that it cannot be that uh, any other barrier, it just drops to zero. And I can show you what's happened. So in reality, if you check the umbrella sampling uh, uh, simulation tutorial, it will be said that this is a heavily undersampled region. It means that you have basically, in none of your simulations, none of the trajectories ever reached that point. Uh, it's basically zero, uh, uh, zero sampled region. And if you build a hist from the hista.xvg, you can build that kind of histograms. And this is a, uh, basically uh, for each of your uh, umbrellas for each of your uh, frames. You can build a distribution in that frame. In ideally, it should be a Gaussian. Also, it's not the case here. Yeah, so they're not looking like a normal Gaussians. But the important idea is that exactly at that point, you have really zero uh, samples. So you basically did not. And that's why Ham says that, OK, we don't have anything. It's probably zero here. Uh, yeah. But what is also important here is that if you check the barrier, uh, it's already not so big as it was in the MM force field. It's much, much lower. Uh, and uh, that means that your yeah, MM force will probably not well described in this isomerization also. But what will happen? How to solve that problem? So, to solve the problem, you need to take not 100 femtosecond time steps, but uh, 100 femtoseconds. So, I have 100 steps, but you need a picosecond. So, you need much, much more uh, simulations to be done. And that's what happened when you do 10,000 steps. Now you see that histograms already looking like Gaussians, really. <laughs> so they're really Gaussians, they're overlapping Gaussians. Still, that region is not very well sampled, but that's what's also connected to the question of Oliver. That probably the, um, I, I would say that if I do it again, I will adjust my force constant near that point. So I will increase that region force constant so we can uh, pull it much further away. And uh, uh, and maybe put some additional frames in that region. So I will put several other frames with a bit different uh, angles, the hydral angle values. Uh, okay, but now you see that the uh, profile again changed, and now it's much more converted. It's smooth. So here is uh, uh, yeah. Also the idea is that for if you do this for the protein system, I can warn you that you need to do. A lot of simul simulation should be done in, in, in much, much further. Uh, your simulation should be extended even further. Uh, typically, for the protein system, we are doing in our practical work, we are doing no less than 30 picoseconds uh, simulation for each window. And this is uh, only after the several nanoseconds of MM pre equilibration. So uh, it's not really so fast. Yeah, but this is the best uh, way you can obtain your, uh, your reaction free energy uh, to estimate your uh, reaction kinetics and thermodynamics. Uh, okay, so this uh, on one slide, uh, uh, all three uh, approaches. So uh, what we use, so this black one is a MEM force field. The orange one is the one with a very low sampling and the uh, blue one is QM with a high sampling. So uh, all this should be you always should check if you uh, if you convert your profile if you're doing umbrella sampling. So how it's usually done? Uh, you, for example, do 30 picosecond simulation. Okay, let's do 10 picosecond simulation, 
then you extend this by another uh, like five picoseconds and check if your profile changing. So you only stop doing simulation after your profile stay on the place. So it's not changing when you increase your trajectory further. Uh, okay, 